There is a considerable difference in between the activities we are seeing in the markets and what's going on in the economy. Economically, we see perpetual weakness with a small glimmer of hope. If growth can accelerate to astronomical levels and costs can be brought down dramatically, there is hope. Since neither of these will happen, the most likely scenario is that the Fed will print money and buy up anything and everything. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at two things, the stock market and the economy. They are two very different things, although people generally confuse the two. I'm going to show you the details, all of which you need to know, and I wanted to begin by taking a look at the markets. You can see the sea of red no matter where you look around the world. It is red, 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 all into the negative today, except for the VIX index, which has actually increased 21% today. Finally, we see a little bit of volatility on the VIX, but it won't take much to push that back down because of course we know that Jerome Powell had admitted previously that they have a short position on volatility and you're looking at the markets obviously coming down today at the time of this recording, which is just afternoon. We are looking at the Dow Jones being down 400 points, 396 to be exact. The NASDAQ is down almost 2%, the S&P down 44 points there. So we're looking at this market being affected by what we're seeing in the news on the daily basis. Today it happens to be the trade issues between China and the US. Tomorrow it's because there was a cloud in the sky. But we'll see how it works out over the last little while. Obviously if I click on the six months we are seeing that this market has done very well in this period of time. But if you stretch it back a little bit further you can see that we hit this moment. By the way we're down about a thousand points actually a little bit more than a thousand points from the peak experienced about a month ago. So the market has really taken a beating in this little while. If you go back to which I believe is September, October time frame, we were actually not able to get back to that previous high on the Dow Jones. The S&P I think is actually exceeding that level, but basically around the same territory. And if I stretch this back even further on the five year, you can see that this range has been sort of a top for the market. So it needs to bust through that. It needs to go past the 3000 mark. It needs to go a lot further than that actually at this point in time because this has been you know a period of time that has passed you have to factor in inflation and obviously everything that has happened ever since Here's an article out of CNBC just basically talking about the issues that are going on, the China and the US trade issues, the Huawei issues, looking at the Dow Jones dropping 400 points, IBM taking a hit and other companies. They're just pointing to the PMI and other issues that are very important to be focusing on as time goes on. In here, you can actually see JP Morgan talking about the trade landscape looking bleaker than ever. Anyone bullish on the SPX has to be conducting a lot of soul searching at the moment. So that tells you where they are really looking at right now. And I will show you the details of that in just a moment. China says trade talks can't continue unless the US addresses its wrong actions. So both sides have been yelling and screaming at each other. Ultimately, both sides have gone to their respective countries. The trade talks are not continuing. There are no scheduled trade talks to happen at this time, even though we had seen a moment of 90 days hard line, then it was going to be at the end of the week, the deal was going to be signed, then it was going to be that three to four week time frame, then we heard no rush, no rush, no rush, don't worry about it. And now there are absolutely no talks going back to the drawing board, starting all over again was one of the comments. So both sides here are not talking and that is a big problem. Obviously the whole world wants the two countries to get along to do business. When you do business with each country, it is beneficial to both sides. They can suggest one side is screwing over the other. All I know is that look at the US and Vietnam, okay? At one point, they weren't so good of friends. Now they're trading. Now they're both benefiting from what's happening. As you can look at the history on this subject, obviously these two sides, they have some tensions between the two. And this trade deal is just one small part. I have done videos on that previously. Looking at the yield curve, the three month and the 10 year has inverted once again. And you're looking at the two year, 10 year, which is at 16 right now. So it is basically straddling.
it on the line. We had seen this actually inverting just for a little bit, a couple times over the past several months, and there's no telling where it will go, but history is any guide in this situation that tells us that it is looking to invert further and further. And of course, it's not during the inversion process that we have to worry, it's actually when it continues to go higher. This could be that it goes down much further or doesn't even have to. A recession could kick in, we could see the stock markets falling as a result of this. While it isn't the actual cause of why a stock market will fall, ultimately it just becomes a very good indicator of what's to come. Market economics has some good stats. I'd like to bring it to you, always showing you the newest data when it comes out and you can see how this has been affected. The PMI has come down quite a bit here. All right, now you're looking at these different numbers, the US Composite Output Index, a 36 month low. US Services Businesses Activity Index, a 39 month low. US Manufacturing PMI, a 116 month low and US Manufacturing output index at a 35 month low. We were told the GDP was doing well. We were told manufacturing was coming back. We were told that the economy was doing well. And yet all of these factors show down, down, down. Now, yes, we can look at the stock market since March of 2009, and it has done very well. I am not talking about the damn stock market. I'm talking about the economy. There are resistances everywhere, and you need to pay attention. Here is the PMI just showing you close up what it looks like and obviously this has taken an absolute beating when you see these numbers. There's no other way to put it. There's no way to deny it. One of the biggest companies in the world in relation to how much damage it can actually do. This is the global systemically important banks. This is the two big to fail banks. Deutsche Bank is the number one in many ways. Not necessarily the biggest, but I think it's spread out and it's hurting the most. This is the potential danger that we have in a country that is always you know, Germany is always seen as being, oh, it's the strongest country, it's doing so well. But in this case, this massive corporation, global corporation, is actually posing a risk of such magnitude that the world is unaware of. And unfortunately, this is going to create a problem that will need to be bailed out by some method that we have never seen before, because a traditional bailout cannot fix this company that has, at the last time I checked, approximately 50 trillion trillion dollars worth of 50 trillion euro worth of derivatives there's no way that they can simply just bail that out okay they can't bail it in either there has to be some sort of wacky new way of fixing it and i am worried about what they're going to come up with Deutsche Bank said far-reaching changes are needed, including significant cuts to its investment bank. That's not according to a rumor. That's not according to an analyst or an unconfirmed source. I am giving you the words directly from the CEO. He's saying they're going to cut even more jobs. So be prepared for this. When Deutsche Bank does it, Commerce Bank will probably do it. Other banks around Europe will probably do it. And this is going to spread. I can assure you we are prepared to make tough cutbacks. That's another question quote, we will accelerate the transformation, meaning firing people, by rigorously focusing on our bank's profitable and growing businesses, which are particularly relevant for our clients. Obviously, this is what these corporations do. This is what they will do in the future, of course, as we see the conditions getting worse. Right now, we're being told everything's fine, and imagine how bad this can actually get. You're looking at crude oil being down to a level of $58, of course, over the last, let's say, year. It has performed a little well. If I could pull that chart up just showing you how the growth has been there basically since the beginning of the year it has actually picked up quite a bit I just wanted to give you an idea of where that has been we saw this down in $30 $40 you know area and just trying to see how that has really reacted to all the news that's been out to the geopolitical tensions and so on now the Federal Reserve is responsible for so much of the demise that we see in the daily activities of human beings but they don't really understand it, okay? So the Fed is the head of the snake. The Fed is basically the lender of last resort for the entire world. It has nothing to do with the ECB, nothing to do with other central banks out there. The Federal Reserve is the one. Now you're looking at the admissions, basically is what it is, that the economy is not doing well and that the markets require consistent and never-ending stimulus in order to keep it alive. Fed minutes. No rate moves are coming for some time, even 
if the economy improves. Even if it improves, are you suggesting that it's bad right now? Are you suggesting that it's not doing well? Because that's what I'm getting out of this. Anyway, regardless, they're not going to bring up the interest rate. That's it. They're done. And if you look back historically at the Fed funds rate, they keep it at a certain level for a little while. And then that's it. They drop them down when the recession's way already on. This is what happens time and time again. The cycle is repeating. They never get to a point at which they keep it at a certain level. And then later down the road, they increase. Once they get to this point where they plateau on the Fed funds rate, there is a recession imminent. That's history. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just telling you like it is. Then we have Northman Trader, always somebody that's interesting to look at, a lot of technical data, but he made this point and it bears repeating. No central banker will ever give a heads up about a coming downturn or crisis. Their job, above all, is to maintain confidence no matter what. Bernanke in 2007, subprime contained. You remember that one? Powell 2019, leverage lending is no threat. That's when you need to be concerned. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like on this video, you're supporting me, supporting this channel and the truth. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need from top to bottom A to Z. You can get all the details at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what's really going on with the debt situation, with the economy, with everything that is actually happening, you need to watch this video. Click on it and I will see you there.